Shelf. Man, 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 man. The most high. His presence is literally here. And can't nobody dis discern the time. Can't nobody discern the sign of the time. Man, can't nobody discern the sign of the time. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I just thought about it. I was like, man, I ain't gonna do no more videos on here. Anyway, it's easier to do the videos on here, you know, but I'm about to get a, a, a certain situation set up on, uh, on YouTube. God willing, y'all willing, you know, in his time and his will that I'll be able to really focus more on, um, like, I just like the presentation better on YouTube. I also like, you know, when I get those scriptures out, it's just a different flow to it than when I go live on Instagram. It's just like a totally different flow. And it's just like, I pretty much just be going by the spirit. And because I got my own battles that I'm working with, this is just the easiest way that I could give out and give people a word. Anyway, get to the uh, lesson of the day. Um, God's presence is here. Amen. His presence is here right now. But the thing is, people don't got patience enough to actually sow the real true seed of God in their life because they got desires to get back into the world. They just want to get a little bit of salvation and get a little bit of knowledge of who Jesus is so that they can feel comfortable going back to chasing what Jesus tried to what he what he died to redeem you from. Jesus died to it. And when he died and redeemed you, he didn't bought. He said, I did not buy you. I didn't redeem you with corruptible things. What is the money? What is the what is the things of the corruptible things are? Is no one understanding right now what we must give in order that to, to, to live with Jesus? Y'all don't know the grace of our Lord is that he was made poor so that we might be made rich. Do you understand what that means? This is for the parents. This is for anybody out there that has family and friends that's chasing goals and aspirations in the dying world. You see them chasing goals and dreams in the dying world and you got the wisdom and the knowledge of the living God and you shall not shout a trumpet and warn them from the evils to come. That must mean you must not know the evils to come. That must mean you must not know what this, what this life is. Y'all must not know this is the valley of what? The valley of decision. You got evil here and good here. This is an opportunity for you to choose. And guess what? Many people think just because they profess the name of Christ that they've chosen. You profess the name of Christ, but your life has to also back up what you're saying. When you say that you love something, when you say that something is in your heart, you cannot stop chasing what's in you. It's not even. Uh, uh, that's why God created the body the way he did. But the body is literally to do what? To express what what is actually in you. The soul that is in you, the soul that you are of, you express that by what you chase after, uh, by what you speaking after, by what you are longing after, by what you're constantly on a, uh, on, a uh, on a pursuit of. Whatever you're pursuing, that's where your heart is. Amen. When you love a woman or a woman love a man, what do we do? We pursue them because I have to have you. So how are you saying you got Jesus and you still pursuing the world and his time and his coming is right here. This is just something that I'm just putting. Uh, I'm just saying this because I, I seen something the other day. I can't explain. I seen something the other day. I can't explain. But the Bible explaining it. And, and, and so my 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 frustration is in the fact that that. Many of y'all are lukewarm and y'all are on the route to perdition and you care it's not about your own soul. It's something to talk about. It's something to marvel at how everybody professing Christ, but don't nobody know that the signs of his coming is literally here. The signs of the worst tribulation that no man ever went through. Do y'all know the things that are due to come here right now? They got you drunk on football, basketball and all of these all of these different sources of spiritual fornications. These are spiritual adulteries. Are you married to Jesus Christ? Are you married to Jesus Christ? Because if you are spiritually married to Jesus Christ, then you know that he said that if you're loving the things of the world, if you're desiring the things of the world, that's called spiritual adultery. You're supposed to be married to him. And if you're loving these things and these things is on your mind, and this is what you're chasing after, you are unclean. So dreamers, dreamers, they can't discern the signs of the time. Why? Because they don't want this world to end. People don't want America and its ways to end. Why? Because they want to get rich in America first. They just want to help Christ with the riches. You don't help Christ with riches. You help him with his riches. His riches is greater than any choice gold or any choice silver. And that's how you save a life. Instead of many of y'all, y'all think that y'all going to save a life. You're trying to save the body. The body going to die. Y'all living to save what's already dead. That's showing the spirit of you. You living to glorify and magnify what's already dead. That is showing the soul of you that you have no substance. 
That's why you worship. That's why we worship in who? Man-made images that God created, but not the one who created it. People are football. I'm talking, look at your life. Many kids, they out here, y'all, y'all are compromising salvation for temporal things. And his coming is here. Anyway, let's get into the story of the day, right? Story of the day. And then after, um, how do I want to do it? Holy Spirit, how you want to do it? Right, I'm going to do the Sarah first, right? Because I just want to I just want to put this scripture out here because many of y'all think that it is a game. Um, I think when, when, when Christ said come to the Lord, he ain't just saying in word, but in, draw nigh to him in your heart. It's easy to say Christ out your mouth, but in your heart, are you crying out to Christ and asking for wisdom? Are you drawing nigh to him? Are you willing to, because if you don't draw nigh to him, then you won't understand the love that he had for you. So it's going to be easy for you to continue to go back into sin. It's going to be easy for you to continue to hang around the enemy. It's going to be easy for you not to even know the enemy or see the enemy because you have to be spiritually reborn the only way that you can be spiritually reborn is you need time with Christ and not time seeking your own life. He told you any if any man finds his life, he going to lose it. I see. Do you know what that means? That's your goal. That is your, that's you having a life of goals. I got to get this done. God said no one who who no no soldier who entangles himself into warfare is to be cared about the day to day affair. So if I'm a soldier for Jesus Christ, what career I got? What goal I got? When you enlist as a soldier for Christ, you're supposed to fight solely for that. But guess what? The many of y'all, the many of these people, like the people that just clicked off, they don't want to hear that. Because God said in his word for the preaching of the cross is to them that's going to hell foolishness. To the people that got goals that their kids might get rich in, and, and, let, and, and, and allow for them to live a, a happy life on their way to hell. These are the people that's going to mock this message. These are the people that's going to speak evil of dignity saying, no, my kid got to get their college degree. They got to get their high school degree. That college degree, that high school degree, degree ain't going to do nothing. What is that but a piece of paper that you was uh, uh, tricked into operating in a system of the world where God God says ever learning don't you learn in the word he said ever learning but never getting around to learn the knowledge of the truth amen you can learn all you want you so seeds to your flesh when you think about money when you think about goals you're sowing seeds to your flesh and y'all think God gonna be mocked I really think that many of y'all think that you can still chase God and chase after goals and riches I really think that y'all think that because look at the world Look at the world. Why ain't y'all shouting y'all trumpets? Where are y'all at? You don't need to be famous. You don't need to be rich. God said he can be, God is honored through wisdom. Somebody that is lowly, that means that you don't got no pride. You should be boosted up. They ain't watching. Don't nobody really see the riches in Jesus Christ. Everybody only see the riches in the world. Everybody only see the riches in man. Don't nobody see the riches in he who died for man. But they just keep seeing the riches in man because they don't know Jesus. And again, right? Let's go to let's go to uh <clears throat> let's go to Sarah because this is this is the truth that's at present right now. This is Sarah or Ecclesiasticus 5, right? And so this is what many people is doing. Many people is waiting to come to the Lord. Many people waiting to come to the Lord until they get all they sin out. Or many people just what? It's the excuse of so many people they, they want to get their sin out and other people want to what? What is the other reason why people delay? They bitter. Because they can't understand the things of God. They never seek God, but in terms, they just end up hating God instead of going to God and, 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 and desiring a, not a why is this happening to me, but what is happening in the world that I might not offend thee. Like what is happening in the world that I might understand the why men are alive and why the evils is going on and why the deaths and everything is present, right? So anyway, uh, Ecclesiasticus 5-7, make no tarrying to turn to Christ. And put not off from day to day. Make no waiting to turn to the Lord. And put not off from day to day. Let's talk about it. All right. They say for suddenly. This is a sudden moment. Right. See, people don't understand how when sudden things happen, it's done. When Vaughn died, he died suddenly. You are alive for 28 years and then in the sun it's, the, it's over with. And God telling you, you don't think you could think that you got a long time until you get to you where you're going. I'm 28 right now. If you'd ask me when I was 20, how long you think it's gonna take? Like when I'm, you know, when you're looking ahead, it seems far away. But when you're there, what happens? When you're looking forward to something, it seems far away. But we already know, man. I looked forward to a month, and then I ended up in that month. And when I got to that month, it didn't take as long as I thought. 
Sudden. These things gonna happen sudden. They're gonna happen instantly. Instantly, you could get you could die in a car crash right now today, suddenly. Where are you going? Is your is your career, is your degrees, is all the things that gave you pride and gave you a sense of self? Is you, you gonna go to Jesus and say, I have my doctorate, Abba? Your doctorate wasn't no doctor in the spirit. You was doctor in no flesh that should have been paying attention to me. You got caught in the trap. So now you're gonna have to pay for it because you did not think that I was as great as you thought some temporary riches was greater than the eternal God that created the temporary things. And I told you, I told, I sent out my messengers. They were passionate. They were in love with you. And you still rejected me through my messengers. You rejected me through my messages because you had a goal. You had dreams. You had love for carnal things and not love for me, who is all things. It says that he consisted before, no, he is before all things and all things be, consist because of him. So your mother, your father, your sister, whatever goes and all that stuff that you think is something is nothing. It says that he, who is he? Jesus Christ, the man who made you in his image. He loved you so much, he made you in his image, and he died for you. To, for that you might be able to escape the torments that is coming. But the sad thing is, many people can't die for the brother because you don't have the father in you. So now you got to be tormented because you are a murderer. You are one who's going to be looked at in the day of judgment as one who killed Jesus. Do you know that? Do you know that when we get in the judgment day that y'all are going to be sitting on the judgment seat and every last one of y'all who don't really love Jesus, who don't really walk this way, who don't really change your mind and set your mind onto the things above and not the things in earth. Do you know that when he judge you, your death, I mean, your sentence is going to be eternal life in hell because you were one who had partook in killing Christ. You partook in the death of Jesus Christ by what you did. Yeah, bro, I'm the body of Jesus. Amen. A believer is baptized into the blood of Jesus Christ, which makes me now him. It says that he who sanctify it and he that is sanctified are one. So if you kill the saint, well, you are doing what? That blood is Christ now. We were, we were redeemed by Christ's blood. So whenever you're taking out the things of this world that is of Christ, then you're killing him. And many of y'all are going to pay a, a price you can't even fathom. Don't nobody want to talk about hell because most of them are on their way to it. <laughs> they don't want to talk about it. They just rather wake up in hell because they know that they're on their way to it. It's just what it is. Make notarian to turn to Yahuwah, which is the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly... Shall the wrath of God come forth and in your security where you think that you when he said in your security, you don't think that you comfortable. You don't think that you safe. He going to come in a thief. Were you comfortable? You think that you safe in there? Boom. Hello. It ain't going to be fun. Bro, y'all do this again. And let's keep reading. And it says, and in your security, you shall be destroyed. That mean that body don't die. Hey, brother, let me let me. Uh. Many times, I, hey, brother, sit back, listen. God changed languages. You are only saying his name is Yahusha because that's what man is out here putting out. Brother, you don't know Hebrew. You have to go back and refer to English in order that you might even learn Hebrew. This is what God said, that presumptuous and self-willed. When we hear things, they presume it to be true without any facts or without any revelation from the living God. Brother, stop talking. You and people like you are the reason why our people continuously die. You don't got no studying under your belt. You probably study the majority of the black people in America. They read at third and fourth grade level readings. They don't have no intellect at all. Brother, stop it. Stop talking. It, it tells you in Genesis that God changed languages. God changed languages. So if any man get to talking about language, hey, brother, guess what the most known language in the entire world is? English. Guess what the most famous name is of Jesus Christ known to man? Jesus Christ. Please stop talking. I'm not distracted. See, even when you think I'm distracted, I'm on course. My job is to sit here. Y'all sit back and then sit back. Like, let me do what I do. I'm never distracted. When you think I'm distracted, this works for everything work together for good. I'm showing you how many people are presumptuous, knowing not the spirit, but sensual. They going off of how they feel about something. Oh, I like that name better. Do Jesus change names. What are you talking about? And many of y'all who operate in y'all flesh and operate in y'all y'all emotions of, a, of the body, you're going to look at me and be like, bro, you're doing too much. No, you're not doing enough in the spirit. And that's why when I talk the truth, you're offended because you don't do enough in the spirit. You're a carnal man. 
And, and that's going to offend some too. You need to get out of that. All of that bitterness, all of that anger, all of that. You need to understand that right now. God said, let's talk about it. The secret of the Lord is with them who fear him. Their secrets. And God said, they are with those who fear him. I'm just going to be honest. Let me not say nothing, man. Glory to Jesus. But the secret of the Lord are with them who fear him. And to them he show his covenant. Man, y'all don't know no covenant. You don't know no secrets. You right here talking about some. The language, his name, don't call him God. Call, God is a title. And he is. The, these dudes are. <sighs> anyway, go back to it. All right. Anyway, suddenly shall the wrath of Yahuwah, which is the Lord, come forth. And in your security, you shall be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Judgment day. They said, wait, in your security, one that's death to the body, destroyed means death to the body, perishing, eternal, eternal, everlasting. And many people going to play with it, put not off from day to day, right? So anyway, I got to tell y'all what I talked about. He said, what does it mean to be using his name in vain, brother? Hey, brother, move around, please move. Let me, I got something for you. It's all of this extra. <clears throat> it's like he don't understand. Like the questions that they do is that the word of God says, avoid all foolish and vain. Well, it said avoid all foolish questions. Avoid all foolish questions. All questions that ain't got no kind of uh, wisdom in it. It's just they, they, they ask questions. What? Because it's emulation. That's what God say. Emulation is the work of the flesh. Where people will say something to provoke you to, to fill in a way only to provoke you to go drawing in sin. And they don't know that they're provoking you into sin because they are in sin themselves. When sin is inside of them, exactly, Trinity doctrine is sin from hell. Amen. Ain't no Trinity, nothing. God never called anything to Trinity. Um, um, anyways, uh, right? Talk about this. Let's talk about this vision. Not a vision. I rebuke that. Let's talk about what I saw because that's the reason. Why, amen, that I'm doing this, y'all. The signs of Jesus Christ coming is here. So, right, anyway, and I, I was on the phone. Really, I ain't got to get out here and do no lying, doing no faking. God said the, the wisdom, we hate frowardness. We hate lies. Those who fear the Lord hate evil. I would never lie. But I just know that many people because it, I can't even understand what I saw, right? Anyway, it was a late night, and I'm on the phone with the brethren, and we just be late night. Chopping it up, man, in the spirit, late night, just trying to keep our minds sticking on the things of the Lord because that's the only thing right now that's peace to us. Right now, that's the only thing right now that's actually a way for us not to continue to die in the inside and want to, you know, take our lives because of the, the things that's at war right now, the things that's at hand. And so I'm outside. Mind you, it's pitch black. It's super dark right here by this church that I'm going to. Right. And I'm just talking to them. Walk to them. I'm just I'm just chopping it. And some, I get an unction in my spirit and it say, I look up, right? Bro, when I look up, man, why it was like this, it was like this light. I can't even explain to you. My mind and my spirit is still marveling at it today because it was nothing that a human can make. It was nothing that you or I have never seen in my entire life. Mind you, to go, so to tell you some of the things that I've seen, right? I've seen falling stars or shooting stars, whatever you might say. I don't know what y'all call them, but I call them falling star shooting stars. And so normally with a falling star or a shooting star that I've never that I've seen, it would always fall with like a like a kind of like an oranges goldish color type per se. But this what I saw in the sky, one, it didn't fall. Two, it was direct. Like, bro. So and I'm gonna read y'all a Bible scripture too, just so that y'all could be on context of what's coming. Because the many of these people, bro, you so many of us are so dead in the spirit, brothers. When these things start, when these spiritual things start, that it's gonna be ugly. I'm not even gonna go too much into it, but brothers, I'm praying for y'all. I'm praying for y'all for the mothers and everybody that out here still chasing the world. Got your children still chasing the riches of Babylon, the system that Jesus spoke against that He told you not to agree with, but many of y'all still agree with it because you don't know Jesus. You know the Jesus of this world, which is the anti. Christ system. Live in luxury. Live in luxury. Chase your selfish pleasure, but just be good to men. That's all they want you to do. Speak good to people, but still live like a devil. How can I actually be good to somebody? Y'all faking. They got y'all faking. They got you cursing men in your heart, but smiling in their face. They got you speaking good words, but in your heart, you envying. In your heart, you're jealous. In your heart, you're coveting after what they have. These are spiritual sins, and you don't even know that they spiritual sin. You don't even know that these things is casting you into the furnace. Why? Because the enemy is so good at his job. Look at the majority of everybody right now blinded. 
How is they blinded? Because they see something greater. You don't see these careers out here that they chasing? They see something greater. Everybody learning, but never getting to learn the knowledge of the truth is that the world is a lie. The world is a trap. But guess what? Many people like the trap because they sensual. Not having the spirit. Do you know sensual means that they like what they see, they like what they can touch and taste, but they don't have the spirit, so they cannot understand, they can't perceive, they can't perceive this what's at work, except, <laughs> you know, you can see something, but not perceive what's going on, that's spiritual, I can see somebody fighting, but if, but you don't know, the, like, the perception is different than what you see. What, what, what perception is spiritual You can spiritually discern a situation And many people can't discern What's happening in the world right now Because you're spiritually dead Whether you get it or not right Anyway go back right To the vision Like I said I'm on the phone with two of my brothers I get an unction look up And it's this It's this light that was shining right And it was weird because it didn't shine at first But when I looked up it happened so quick it shined real quick. It, it, it blew up real quick. Then it flew across the sky so fast at lightning speed, brother. It flew across the sky so fast at lightning speed. Then there was some dude out there. He was tripping me out. I did not know if this dude was a warlock, if he was a witch. Mind y'all, y'all don't, don't even know the half of what's really going on in this spiritual realm, right? Y'all know that there's real riches. Y'all know that there's real warlocks. Did you know that there's, do y'all know that there's real vampires and werewolves and real sirens, which is mermaids? Do y'all not know these things? Do y'all not know the things that, that they mock and they put in the TV shows as soon to, it's soon to be real. Where do you think that they get these images? It's Satan's vices. These are Satan's most prized uh, uh, demons. And they are about to get ready to come out of the bottomless pit. And they are fully going to take a vessel. They're going to have... Sh Many people don't know what's on the way. Y'all don't even know the tribulation that's on the way. Let me just, let me just, let me just talk about it real quick before y'all try to say I'm tweaking. What did Christ say? As in the days of Noah was, so shall the end be. What happened in the days of Noah? The Nephilim. Do y'all know what the Nephilim really did? You probably don't know what the Nephilim really did. We're going to do some studies on it. But the Nephilim was the sons of God who came down and not only did they mate with men and create giants, but they, they mated with all living creatures and created giant turtles. That's where you get the dinosaurs from. That's where you get elephants from. That's why you get donkeys from. This is where you get the majority of the, a lot of these things God did not create. A lot of these things, the enemies with spiritual births, they came down and created these things. It's in the Bible, but only with wisdom where you go to the book of Enoch. Y'all need to be studying. Y'all need to be fasting. Us, young like me, the, 30, the, the 32s on down, bro, you need to get in the spirit. He's calling the younger people right now to fight differently. Y'all don't hear about the Nephilim story? The, uh, uh, that was in Miami, y'all. They keep they gotta keep you doped up on football, basketball, and drugs, so that you, these stories of the things that's happened in the world, where it's the speaking of God's truth, they don't they they want the the, the 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 pollution of the world to override that. Like when they heard that in Miami, when they saw them them, them gray figures floating, y'all think it's sweet. Y'all think it's sweet. People, oh man, this you think it's cartoon until it's not a cartoon. And guess what? Hell. Hell, 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 hell is after. So many people gonna go through torment now and hell after. But like I said, right? It was a figure in the sky that I cannot even comprehend. But the Nephilim ain't fallen angels. The fallen angels created the Nephilim. The fallen angels were the spirits, the sons of God, who left their place when supposed to, because they fell in love with women. And not only did they mate with women, but they also mated with different animals. And that's why God had to do what? Flood the world, because they was killing people. Man was evil. We was agreeing with it. Women was having sex with all these different animals. And that man was probably doing the same thing. But anyway, it was some sort of weird figure in the sky, right? Don't know what it was, but let's read what Jesus said. And we read in the whole Luke 21. We read in the whole Luke, Luke 21. We read in the whole Luke 21. Listen in because this, just listen to some of the things right now and see whether or not if these things are present in the world. See if these things are present in the world because this is what I, your soul, right? Your soul. The only way you keep your soul is to know what's to come. If I don't know what's coming, if something coming, I don't know what's coming. How could you ever stay in peace? 
God gave you this book so that you could be able to stay in peace at knowing what's coming. Because Jesus said, patience possesses ye your souls. But if you don't know what's coming, how could you stay patient when you're scared? When you know something is coming, you can look forward to it so you can prepare. He told you to stay watchful. He told us to be watchful. But you can't be watchful because you're trying to watch out for goals. Many people trying to get rich in football and basketball. They're not going to be. These people can't be watchful. You're too busy to be watchful. You're too busy to be watchful. Anyways, let's talk about it. <clears throat> Luke 21, we're going to start. Seven. And they asked him, said, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign? Come on. A sign is something that you see or something that is, uh, yeah, something that you see that's telling of something that's to come. <clears throat> or uh, communicate something to you. But in God's signs, it's spiritual. Like, what they about to do with the New Testament, that's a sign of the book of Daniel. Them taking out what? The sacrifice. It's spiritual. I ain't going to go right into it because many it's just too long. Some of this stuff, I can't even talk to y'all because y'all are so on milk. And we got to kind of just take it slow. That's what I'm telling you. Got to get up. We got to, Now, I feel for people, bro. Because I really, 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 really do. Like, ever learning, but never getting around to learning knowledge of the truth. People got so much time in their days, but they do not spend no time in this word. They spend more time focusing on the flesh. Than anything else. What's good with it, Ed? But listen, let's listen in though. It said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. Jesus said, Take heed. What I'm telling you, pay attention to that no man come deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. That's what he said is going to be Antichrist. Y'all don't know it right now over here in America, but there's many people over there in Africa. They're doing all types of, um, they're walking on water. They turn the water to wine. They over there professing that they are the Christ. I literally just saw a video with a whole, this, some black dude, and, 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 and he said that he Jesus. They got Mary Magdalene reincarnated. They got the, the I ain't even going to talk. Y'all got to be watchful, man. All I can tell you is America is blinding you. America, as for you being a black descendant of a slave, their goal is to keep you drunk off the wine of uh, witchcraft because that's what they're using on us. these TV shows and the music that y'all listening to. All of this stuff is witchcraft, and that's why you can't get out of it. That's why you can't stop watching these per perverted shows. All these TV shows continue to get even more and more sadistic. It got pedophilia in it. You see kids that look like they're supposed to be 14 and 15 having sex, sleeping in the bed. They promoting a, a, a fornication. Y'all think they promoting these wicked frequencies against God for no reason? No, they promoting it to y'all because y'all are willing to embody it. If you're willing to embody it, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. God said evil communication corrupt good manners. It don't matter what you say. All that matters is what God said. So you can say, nah, man, I ain't going to do nothing. And then you're going to see yourself do it. And you can keep lying to yourself. But God, where are they going to be? Going? It's where they're going to come back void. Yeah, keep watching all of these evil shows. Many people don't even see me when I watch them. I got wisdom. I watch them so I can come in and show y'all and tell y'all what they doing. But many of y'all watching them and desiring to just, just fellowship with evil. Your pastor won't preach the truth because your pastor don't know the truth. Many of these dudes are false teachers, false prophets. And he said that the priest preach for a hire. So that's why they only go up there on Sunday and Wednesday because they preach for money. It's only about money. If it was only if it was about salvation, they'd be out here doing what I'm doing. They they just get out here, preach to y'all, talk to y'all, right? But it ain't about breaking down the word. It ain't about getting people to see the spiritual war. He told us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against well, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Who is doing this? It's the synagogue of Satan. A.K.A. the false Jews. They are the ones who, who have the whole world in their hands. They own Sony. They own Disney. All of these things, they putting curses on us. Do y'all know when you watching certain certain of these shows and you don't understand the words that they saying and they ain't even got the subtitles in it? It's because they really trying to put a curse on you to what? Bind you into whatever spell they casting. These TV shows is to cast spells. It's to literally get your mind saturated with the vices of the devil that he might be able to come in, come into your home and dwell in you. And certain things like covetousness, certain things like uh, uh, bitterness, anger, certain different strife, certain like and, and he really loves to get us with the sexual perversions because. 
It's normal for a woman to desire a man and man to desire a woman, but the enemy in the flesh will pervert it so much that now your desire is not natural at all, but it's only perverted and it's not about the soul. It's not about the loving and us coming together in truth that we might be able to spiritually keep each other uplifted, but it's only about, man, what could I do to your body? What could you do to my body that we might continue to feel the greatest pleasure? They got us chasing after a God, uh, uh, like what, Ashtaroth? There's many different spirits that when you can't, so the spirits is, so look, the Baal, they build a calf of Baal, but Baal was actually that. And then when the Nephilim was here, he was an actual God. He was an actual God that looked like what they built. But because they didn't see him no more, they made an image of what they was uh, truly of the God that they were worshiping. This was his vice. This was the thing that when Baal was around, this is how he deceived the people by, by self-pleasure. Not just self-pleasure, but self-worship. Many people right now, black people, the descendants of Jacob, eat Judah. We, we love Baal worship. We, we love the gold. We love to outwardly look real good. And that's why the Pharisees did what they did. Because they thought that they was better. They wanted to look better. But anyways, man, these spirits are seducing us into doing their will. Anyways, <clears throat> Christ said, the time draw near, draweth near. Go ye not, therefore, after them. Don't follow after these false Christs. Many of y'all, I'm sorry, but I got to tell y'all, y'all are following after, y'all are following after many ministers of darkness. Y'all following after many people who don't have the spirit. They don't teach y'all nothing. You get stuck in these stories, but you don't even know how to fight spiritual war. Which one of y'all ever listened to a sermon from these people right here going viral and you actually uh, 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 felt compelled to want to go to Jesus? No, you probably feel more compelled to just want to go get sitting and get entertained because y'all are being what? You're, they change it. Uh, charm steals the heart. Y'all know that, right? That's what charm does. That's what Satan did. He said that he blinded the heart of the, of the unbeliever So because he, he stole your heart. So they stealing the hearts of men, right, with charm, with kind words, with magnetism, with aura. These things are spiritual, but if you don't understand spiritual things, they're going to suck you in and you're going to think your pastor love you because he always telling you, talking to you good because you always feel good around your pastor. You always feel uplifted around your pastor. That your pastor is doing that because he's trying to get that bread. Because if the more good you feel, the more money you give but the <laughs> the more good you feel again he said the word of god told y'all and with the fine words they make merchandise of the people with fine words and fine speech they never tell you to turn away from sin they never tell you that hate that these, these evil things that you got going on in your mind that you better repent or you should surely burn and perish they don't talk like that why because they they nobody trying to hear that but everybody trying to hear prosperity everybody trying to hear peace everybody want to hear stories about the people in the bible but they don't want to actually be a story of one of them who actually went through turmoil who actually went through hardships for god but y'all want to hear stories about them and magnify them but don't know that that's supposed to be you God ain't gave you them stories for you to glory in Moses and them. he told you that so that you could get hope and understand that you're just them you're your Moses you're Paul but you don't know that. Why? Because your pastors are not true men of God. Y'all not reading the word of God and see how the, the Sadducees don't even believe. Let's just keep reading, man. I pray for y'all, though. In all honesty, man, I understand the world right now. God is doing what he is doing. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep putting the word out. God going to send all of whom he desired to be saved here. And I, and we're going to do what we can do here. And anime is used. Uh, <clears throat> anime, if you use the sermon, is so evil, bro. Everything of this world is evil. Everything of this world is evil. Everything is vain. How? Why is everything evil? Because you can worship anything. And whatever you worship becomes your God. Right? And so everything is all vanity. That's why Paul, I mean, that's why uh, Solomon said what? Here is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commands. For this is the whole duty of man. Period. All right, but watch this though. It says, listen, but when ye shall hear of wars... And commotions be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. The end ain't yet. But he's saying, cause but but y'all wars is they not over around in the land fighting right now and rumors of war, World War Three. Are we not hearing these things right now? So mind you, let me bring you in. During the same time, they had the same thing. They was in Babylon. No, they weren't in Babylon then, but they was in Jerusalem. And but in that time, they still had to be scattered around. So it kind of it's about to happen again. It's about to happen again. We in Babylon. We in Mystery Babylon. And although they weren't in Babylon then, they had just came out of the exile of Babylon, right? And then Christ came, gave love and everything, gave the truth, gave down his life that we might be able to inherit eternal life. And then after that, they went in, uh, Judah went into captivity over the, uh, all four corners of the earth. 
Anyways, let's talk. But he said, <clears throat> then he said unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines. And this is what we're waiting for next. Famines and pestilences. These are a reason why the food is going to be a scarcity of food. It's on the way. It's a scarcity. Y'all don't even understand what they're going around, what they're going through in these other countries because of Babylon, because of the communication in Babylon, because of the richness in Babylon, because of the lifestyle in Babylon. But when a bomb goes off in Babylon, when all the destruction comes to Babylon, when the fam famines come to Babylon, it ain't going to be funny. America got a lot of jokes. We be the main one joking about Palestine and free Palestine and free this and free that. But when the bombs get to going here, it ain't going to be funny. It ain't going to be no free America, no free, no, and won't, nobody won't be doing none of that. Won't nobody be able to mock or laugh at nobody because we all going to be on the playing field. If you don't have Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, you're going to be dying here in the flesh. You're going to be tormented here. And then you're going to be tormented. You can't even fathom the torments that await. Many people, they thinking that they know Jesus Christ, but they still have not left. They still have not left the evil way in their mind. They still chasing sex. They still chasing drunkenness off the things of this world. Your soul is laying in the ballot. And I pray for y'all because y'all are literally on the way to the gates of hell. Death is a sign to show y'all that life is not y'all own, but y'all continue to keep playing for it. Y'all continue to keep praying, playing with it. Death is a sign to show you that you don't own. But do you, you can't even stop death. But he said, Solomon said, in death, there is no discharge. You know, if it's a war, you can shoot back, but in not in death. T tell me a man who fought death. Nobody. Tell me a man who, who, who was dying about to die. He's like, no, let me come. Nobody. Nobody. You can't stop death. How do you stop listening to drill? It means to submit to Jesus. Make a sacrifice. Submit to Jesus. Start praying. Ask God. Make a sacrifice because if you still listening to drill music, you agree with death. You agree with the death of my people and you agree with the death of your own soul. Because death to one man is death to all. Oh, agreeing with death to one person that's in the body is agreeing with death to your own soul. God said this. He who he who walketh with a, a, a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing and berareth it not. Y'all heard that? That's spiritual. Listen again and listen slow. This is for all y'all. Y'all families, y'all friends. Everybody, bro, this is, this is how pivotal, this is how, this is how, on a minuscule level, because it's minuscule to us, but this is how dead we are in spirit that we think something like this is so small, but it's everything. He said, uh, what did he just say? What did, he, what did I just say? What did I just say? What did I just say? Holy Ghost, spirit. What did I just say? I hate when I'm about to get something and I'm trying to say something and I say something else. Ah, uh, uh, it's my word. Thank you, Holy Ghost Spirit. Thank you. Because I got it. I, I got it. It says that he who walketh, right? Uh, I'm trying to find this. He's trying to leave it. He who walketh with a thief hateth his own soul. But let's talk about this thief. He ain't talking about somebody that's pickpocketing. He ain't talking about somebody that's coming to steal from you. Brothers, listen to the thief he said. Listen to this thief. He said he who walketh with a thief hated his own soul. He said, he heareth cursing and be wary if it not. Talking about us. If I'm walking with somebody that be cursing and I be wary if it not, you hate your own soul. <sighs> why? Because you're, why is he a thief? Because he's stealing peace from you. Not only is he stealing peace from you, he's stealing righteousness from you. So righteousness is your way to the heaven. Communicate. It says, be ye holy. It says, as the father is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Of all manner of conversation. Do y'all wait? Let me tell you something, right? What separates a man of God from a non-man of God? Let's talk about it. If if he look like me, if he walk like me, if he die just like me, what is the only thing that separates him and me? How we talk. It's what we speak like. It's what I believe and what he believes. So it's the mind and what comes out of your mind that separates you. And God says that we need to be holy. And anybody that does what? That got the holy fruits of God? We don't curse. Obviously, you, you might fall short. But I'm saying somebody that, like, when you're getting built up, you're getting built up. But I'm telling y'all, this is the war. He said, he who hanging with a person that's cursing all day, you hate your own soul. Because why? Evil communication corrupt good manners. So if you... Are around somebody that curse and curse and curse and curse and curse. You are allowing for cursing, but curses bind you to death. Y'all know what a curse does? It binds you to the things of death. That's what curses does. 
It binds you to the things that have no life. In Jesus' name, amen? And that's what they want to do to us. That's what they want to do to us in these videos. You could be binded to money. Ain't no life to it. You could be binded to the vessel of a woman. But ain't no life to the vessel. The life is in the, is in the spirit behind the vessel at which that you hear professing their words and love. Amen? But he wants you to focus on the things that have no life. That's why they was doing what back in the day? They were building statues and worshiping them. And he was saying that the things didn't have nothing in them. And it wasn't that the statutes didn't have nothing in them. It was the people that were making the statutes did not have God in them. So what they were doing was making a manifestation of what was in them. Nothing. <laughs> they were worshiping what was in them. Nothing. Gods that couldn't move. Gods that couldn't see nor speak. Nor hear. Nor, nor redeem. Nor save in a time of affliction. Your money can't save you. Pornography can't save you. Bitterness can't save you. Hmm. Covetousness can't save you. They condemn you. Em emulations, seditions. That's what seditions is. Y'all best get right. Want to want to fight? Want to uh, get out here and do the things of the world? We gotta get away from the world, brothers. The reason why we're so bitter and so angry and so uh, um, depressed is because the world is that. The body wants to dwell in those spirits. You have to go and fight against that. But because you've been in the world so long, when you really start to fight against God, you're going to be coming. To, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be much sorrows in your heart. Why? Because when you start to turn your foot away from evil, now you see the fight. Now you can experience the fight. And that fight is a fight. It's a fight that no man. You can tell that they're not fighting. You can tell that the majority of these dudes that's speaking to God, they, they smiling too much. What's funny? Y'all videos too short. I'm sorry. You got three, four minutes. Everybody learned that from your three, four minute video. Glory to Jesus. I'm just telling you that, man. I, as a real one who got the Holy Spirit. Y'all false teachers, man. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Y'all need to get in y'all spirit. Do you want to be seen or do you want people to make it to heaven? What are you doing it for? Because a lot of these people, they just want to go viral. That's why they, they, they like the little short videos. They like the little quick video talking about salvation, but they don't want to talk about who we is. They don't want to talk about the black descendants of slaves, how you are God's chosen, how if you would rise and they give you the, y'all know that the salvation go to black descendants of slaves before it go to anybody else. Y'all know that, right? The word of God say that, right? But your, your false teacher going to tell you you a Gentile. They will tell you as a black descendant of slaves, who's this God said, my people will be slaves. My people will be, but these people who are not us, they get mad at that and y'all shouldn't be mad at it. Y'all should have compassion on us because y'all are the ones that did this to us. But instead, because y'all don't want to show compassion, but y'all want to make it a, a fleshly thing. That's why many of y'all going to hell. I ain't sitting here speaking, saying that I'm casting nobody in the hell. It's in the word of God. But if you don't know it, you're going to say that I'm, uh, that I'm the one. That I'm the one. Black descendants of slaves. God said that these people got an eternal hatred against you. That means that it never leaves. They know who you are. You don't know who you are. They know who you are. That's why you're hated. That's why we're poor. That's why we're in a land, not our own. My name is Brown. My last name is Brown. That is the what? That is the signifying of the plantation from way back when, when my people came here, uh, from, uh, from, from when they stole us from Africa. We're not from Africa. We're from Jerusalem. We're not from Africa. But they want to tell you you're from Africa because they don't want you to identify with being from Jerusalem. Because then you're going to have to do what? Identify the fact that you're God's chosen to do what? What I'm doing right now. So don't think that you was chose to look good and be lead nobody and be better than nobody. You was chose to lead the nations in righteousness and lead them right back to the Messiah because Esau is the end of the world. But Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Esau is what? The flesh. The desires of the flesh and all the emotions of the flesh. This is the end. But the next part is the beginning of what really is true. This is the end. God got us at the ending first. Y'all know that? We at the end first. Y'all, this is the end. This ain't the beginning. Why you think you die and then you go and live your, you go, your real life is next. But y'all tricked on this life because you got the emotions. That's just going to be something like that. Get in the spirit ASAP. There is no time to delay. You don't have no time to wait. You don't have no time to chase goals or chase careers. You're chasing death. Satan set up, the, God allowed for Satan to set up and use whatever here in this world to trap y'all, to trap y'all kids. 
You cannot serve Jesus Christ and the world. We need preachers. We need people coming up wanting to disciple the word of God. Will you teach your kid that? They be four years old, five years old, six years old on the football field. Well, guess what? That football field taking them directly to hell. They going to run. And it's true. Yeah, I need to. I need to. I need to, brother. I'm going by. I be going by the spirit, brothers. Y'all, I'm. I keep telling y'all, the spirit put me out here to do these things, but I'm going through a world right now I can't explain to y'all, bro. I'm, I'm literally, really, the word speaks for us. So I don't want to say nothing, but I'm going through it. Pray for me, and then the Father will be done in Jesus' name. But I'm telling y'all, right? This is the way the enemy blinds our minds and blinds our blind our heart. He blinded with the things that you think is giving you a way out of desperate, uh, desperate, <laughs> despairing times, times of despair. Times of despair. So he like, look, I could bring you this, man. Look, I could give you all of it. Y'all not remember what he told Jesus? He told you. He tried to trick God. Look, look, man. Look, if you just served, y'all know what was at work. That was the flesh, y'all. That was the flesh. Jesus was trying to show you that the flesh was talking. That's why he said, man, you the king. You king Jesus, man. Go ahead, turn these stones to bread. He was trying to play off of what Jesus, he was trying to play off of him being God. So when you got money, and all, he gonna try to play off of your emotions. Bro. That's all the spirits want you to do because once you start to feel like somebody playing with your emotions, then you can do your, now you can take matters into your own hands. That's what the enemy, he's so subtle at getting you to feel away. So now when you get to feel away, it's like a, a spiritual excuse to do something wrong. It's like a spiritual excuse to, to get back to, uh, you feel me? And, and that's what the enemy does. He said, I'm glad I didn't force my kids into sports. It's just <clears throat> the way that God set it up for me and I didn't push my music. I'm glad I got confirmation. Yeah, everything, everything working together for good right now. And I, and I understand it. Come at, like, look, man, people be forgetting because where they see me at right now, bro, I did it all. I've been to college. I've been to Sports Illustrated. I'm from O Block. I done seen the killers. I know over 100 people did. I lived like 60 different lives in a short amount of time that I might understand all things that I might truly communicate to whom all God sent to me to tell. It's all vain. I've been around a bunch of, I'm talking about, I know a bunch of niggas with real money. I'm talking about so much money, nigga, 0.5% uh, of what they got in their bank account will change your life and my life. But let me tell you this, they will never give you a dollar. They want, bro, God allowed me to see what money does to you. When you get that comfort and you get that money and you just, bro, when you get that pride, when you get a sense of self, bro, you become a whole, you become somebody that God can't help. Why? Because you become a God to yourself, man. You could get out of all problems. Because you could get out of the problems in the world by paying. You got to pay a different price to get out of that with God. You can't pay. What you take God? 50, bro. Well, you could do that with man. And arms given does make up a multitude of sins. Amen. But again, some of these sins, you can't go to God and a judgment day and say, look, man, I have. You said arms given make up for a multitude of sins. You can't give a million dollars when you're dead. He's talking about right now you can give that and God will love you. Because the reason why people chase the rich is because they are oppressing people. It don't amount to nothing if you have riches and no soul. Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Use them riches for the kingdom of God. Right? If you will, and it's going to be some that's rich that God find while they're there. Not some of y'all that's like me. If you poor, stay poor. Chase the riches in Jesus. If you poor, you poor for a reason. Why? It'd be easy for you to get to God. It's easier for you to get to God when you need God. You don't want God when you, when you don't need him. And that leads you to something greater, brothers and sisters. It's beneficial that we might need now that we might desire him. It's beneficial that you might go through whatever you're going through right now that you might truly get to know who Jesus is. I mean, whatever you go through, you got shot, you got hit by a car, if you're, if you're paralyzed, if you're homeless, if it's sending you to Jesus, it's worth it. He said it would be better for you to go to heaven with one arm than to go to hell with two. What that mean? It's better for you to go through affliction. Right here, right now, than to go to hell without none. It's better for you to go through right now than for you to just walk through in peace to go to eternal. T Brothers, I cannot explain to y'all when I get to looking at y'all and I get to telling y'all, I've been to hell. I'm a nigga from O Block. Y'all gonna stop playing with me like I'm not the same as y'all. Like I ain't grew up in the same ways that y'all did. Grew up my mom on drugs. Grew up a crack baby. I'm a legitimate crack baby. It was in my system. Y'all gonna stop tweaking with me. Like I like I grew up in some type of church home. 
I didn't. God is doing something right now and we got to repent. We all come from the same situation, the same backgrounds. If I could do it, broken Jamal who ain't had nothing, you can do it. But brokenness is good. I'm telling you, brokenness, was, that was the only way I could get God, brothers. What, what I went through is the only way I could get God. I had to get broken. And I'm, I, I appreciate it. Why? Because it's sending me to God. The world is death. The world is evil. But he life and peace, bro. He is true. And, and, and he loved me so much that he allowed for me to go through that. I love that. Some people hate God for that. And I once did. I'm like, man, I didn't go through all this and all that. But then when I really got to get to know him, he's like, man, I'm calling you, dude. In order for you to be able to go out there and bring life to people, you got to know what death feel like. You got to know what hurt feel like. You got to know what real pain is. The majority of these people, they don't know what real pain is. They don't know what no real hurt is. You know how, why I desired to want to walk away from O-Block? Because I saw so many niggas dying. And then I'm like, bro, everybody keep dying. I just want to live for my brothers. I want to live for those who died. And God showed me what real life was. It wasn't money and riches as I thought it was. I'm like, niggas, that's what I was desiring. Let me get a bag and live for what they didn't do. What they didn't want to do, what they couldn't do, I would do. And I wasn't even living. This is living. Because this is what leads people to real life. But in order for that you might live, you have to die now. You know that? You know that? In order for you to be reborn in the mind, you have to die now. Die to the pleasures. Die to your goals. Die to your dreams, man. The promise, uh, his coming is here, y'all. His coming is here. Why you think somebody like he choosing all of the people that people would least expect? It's the people who ain't do nothing, ain't go through nothing, who, who ain't shot nobody and ain't killed nobody, but and, and whatever they, and they thinking that they good people. Them are going to be the ones that, uh, because he said, he who is forgiven much, he loveth much. So these people that ain't done nothing, they going to think that they don't need no forgiveness. You are sinners. He said, all men have fallen short. We need to be shouting, Trump is on spiritual sin, bitterness, anger. Let's stop talking about killing and, and only homosexuality because God, ain't, God is looking at the mind because the mind is what's leading us to these sins. When you go steal, that's a mind, that's a spiritual thing. You don't know God. You ain't got no hope in God. You ain't got no faith in God. When a man commits adulteries because he's, adulter he's being an adulterer to God. When you're not... A right in the spirit and make manifest in the flesh. It's because it's the spirit. But when you are getting right in the spirit, the flesh still do what he do and tell you what? Break them through fasting and prayer. So if any of y'all out there falling short to the flesh, don't think that the flesh is condemning you when you've already said no. It's the body that doeth evil, not you, which is the soul. Read the word, meditate on the word, study the word, and understand grace that is given to us by Jesus because he know the war. He know the body. He know it more than you know it. But again, them little times where we keep falling short, he hoping that them times that we fall short, that we might lean on him, that we might desire to keep going back to him and keep doing his things because we tired of that old way of living. We tired of that old way of living, steady doing the same things and it ain't getting no peace. And it's taking my peace now. Masturbation once used to be something, to, something, to, something cool to look forward to until you get in Christ. And then now every time you do it, it's taking peace. Yeah. That's what God does. He loves you so much that when you are in Christ, sin works for you. Sin gets you to want to put it off because it don't feel good. When the Holy Spirit is in you, when God is in you, when you feel God bearing down on your back, it don't feel good to mess with the things of the devil. You got to clean it up. You have to clean it up. We have to clean it up. You have to get out here and shout your horns. We dying on a daily. God said, refrain from all... Uh, um, all appearances of evil. That's what we need to be doing as well. Man, if I could take the flesh off, I would. And we could. We got to walk in the spirit. Walk in the newness of man. Amen. But anyway, let me get back to this loop. But it'd be beneficial for me to talk like that. Because God just have going on what's going on, man. God love y'all. But y'all y'all can't keep delaying y'all coming, bro. All of the stuff of this world ain't taking you absolutely nowhere, brother. It's all vain, man. It's all vain. He's trying to see, man, who loved me enough to continue to chase. Brothers, the world is evil. We can, we can chase the riches of the world to get out of poverty. And God said, I'm greater than them riches. Why will not? They can't chase that because they can't see it. So now he's making a divide of those who are spiritual. They're going to chase it because they're spiritual. They know God better. Whether or not you can see it, even though I, I like. See, the spiritual man. He might not fully understand, but he know to at least cry out to God because I know that there is a, a carnal man going to just be like, nah, bro, I got it. I could do it. Bro, y'all need to start crying to God right now because not only is this salvation for you, but it could be salvation for many others that's in your family, many other people that you know and love. 
Because once you become a son, a man, a, a friend of God, you can save your, your your family. You know that, right? Once once God and you like this, you can intercede on the behalf of others, and God will have compassion on their souls. Let's let's talk about it. He said, "Confess your faults to one another, and pray ye for one of and pray ye one for another, that ye may be healed." The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He said, pray for one another that ye may be healed. Why? That God might heal y'all broken souls. Heal y'all broken and, 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 and minds that are shattered with transgression against God. Right? Fornication in the mind against the Lord our God. <clears throat> All these different sources of, of uh, adultery when we're supposed to be married with Christ. Anyway, let me get back to this just a little bit. So this Luke. Uh, 21, I'm start at 10 because I just, I just want y'all to kind of understand like that, that little whatever I saw, man, this is speaking of the times that's present. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs. Y'all see this? And fearful sights, they on the way. And great signs shall be from heaven. But before all these things, well, which is the one that I'm, this ain't even the one that I was looking for. Because the one that I was looking for, um, I probably, let me see. I'm going to just go here real quick so that y'all can see exactly what I was saying. This is Luke 21, 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing, failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And so that's what I was saying when I saw what I saw. And that thing shot like I was so confused, bro. All I could do was marvel. And I know it wasn't nothing that man created. Man can't create no aircraft that fast, that move at that type of time. And it was such a uh, 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 the light was so radiating. And I've never seen the kind of light before. It was like a super pure essence of a light. It wasn't, I, it wasn't super, super pure, but it was like, I, it was like a light I've never seen in my entire life. And all I, uh, and then I told, I told one of the brothers, um, afterward, and he was just like, he sent me to that verse, and I'm like, man, man, the signs of his time is coming. And, 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 I'm not, and one, I know the flesh, right? And because I know the flesh, many people think that this stuff is gonna be something to look forward to. I'm be honest, like, bro, this ain't, if you got the spirit, if you understanding the things of God, if you fasting and like that, it's something to look forward to. Um, for the majority of the people in the world, brothers, it's already dark. It's so dark. You don't even know it's dark. It look good. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I really don't have no words. Sometimes I don't, I, I can't say much, man. You don't have to go. You have to go get in a spiritual place or how to be a part of the fellowship group. I'm not even run, running fellowships right now. I did say that. I'm God got me taken away from. I'm I'm doing something totally different right now. I'm in a totally different. Um. I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a lot going on right now. It's a lot. Like he said, the one thing that I say, look, the one thing he said, and there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars. Listen to this. And upon the earth, distress of nations. We're stressed out already as it is, even though the majority of this stuff ain't happening. It's a the tension is high. Everybody, it's the stress is high, bro. It's up there, man. I like I don't know. Like I I did the fellowship for like two years straight or a year and a half every single day, almost it was. And so like God got me taking kind of a break now, I'm trying to get built back up that I might be able to do it. But I ain't been having the strength to run it, man. I ain't been having the strength, and so I think God like right now. He wanted people to see right how if, if 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 the wilderness was today, which means that we got to start getting ready to go back to Africa, because getting back to Africa is the only way that you can get back to Jerusalem. Would you be ready if bombs start going off in America right now today? I mean, would you be ready in spirit? Many of y'all would not. You know how I know? Because the word of God is saying that this day going to come upon many as a thief in the night. And if, if everybody would be ready. Y'all will be already preaching about it. There ain't nobody preaching about it. And the people that's preaching ain't preaching. <laughs> the people that's preaching ain't preaching. They fight in another war. Many people, they talk about people being bitter, but they the ones that's bitter fighting against other people. And with, It's just too much confusion, man. Ain't nobody getting out here just really wanting people to go to Christ. 
They just want you to stop looking at everybody else that's doing. And, and that's what God had to get me out of. Look, don't worry about what he doing. Don't worry about how he preaching. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about what they doing. Worry about what you need to be doing. Worry. And when I say worry about that, worry about my ministries and preach my truth. I don't need to bring up a video and have another man as the topic, but Jesus Christ him and him crucified. Period. That's what God was sanctifying me, pulling me to do. But all things work together for good. That one, once I've done it, and then I didn't, I didn't know that these things was against God. Well, when God showed me that he don't want me doing it no more, now he want to see whether or not if I'm going to follow his ways, follow his statutes, which I will. But uh, yeah, as far as the fellowship, I think it just has to be done. Um, I'm trying to see how we going to do it because it, it has to be done. And I know it is on my heart. Again, pray for me. Because in the fellowships, brothers, the fellowships are amazing. And it's about to be even more amazing due to the will of God. It's just that I want one for the women, too. Because uh, we got to get a, a good foundation of, 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 of truth for, an, uh, you know, that, that sense of fellowship for the women, not just the men. You know, because the benefits of fellowship in a way that God has been putting the seeds. Because we got like, in our fellowship, it's not just with the word of God, but we got like a... Um, a cast and lot system and it's gonna get better increasingly but it's you know like if you need something you, you just ask the brothers and then we all pitch in and make sure that our brother have whatever he needs and so for the times it's coming it's definitely 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 gonna be beneficial but yeah keep praying and then you know i'll put it on youtube i'll probably drop a link not a link but i'll drop um i'll drop it on youtube just to ask y'all and i'm about to start doing more detailed uh, YouTube lives, but I'm just in this this, this season right now. It's kind of weird for me. It's kind of awkward for me. That's why I keep saying I ain't gonna get back on here and do it no more. And, but I'm here again anyway. But yeah, I'm about to leave, man. I really just wanted to. I was just compelled to kind of tell people, like, bro, the signs of Jesus Christ coming is here, right? I got to get out here and move around with no big words and all that faking and all that act. I ain't doing all that. We need to really, really, really understand that, man. Our souls is at stake. And nobody's speaking about your soul at stake because ain't nobody thinking about they soul. They thinking about this body, man. This body is already soon to die, bro. Focus on the spirit, bro. Focus on the spirit, bro. My my YouTube, it's in my uh, it came from none podcast. I don't know what Deuteronomy eight eighteen say. I'm not looking at Deuteronomy right now. <clears throat> but yeah, man. Um, stay in prayer, brother. Stay in prayer, stay in prayer, stay in prayer, brothers and sisters. Right now, it's literally the time. Like, y'all can feel it. You can feel it. You want God, but your, but something else is pulling you so far away from that, man. It's a spiritual world right now. Them demons is out of the bottomless pit. And woe be unto us if we don't stay watchful and stay in prayer, man. Stay in prayer, stay watchful. His, I, he said, bro, real fast, can you tell the bros about sports and the pros? Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they already know about it. So look, what is idol worship? Idol worship is praising something. Clapping people on. Shouting, screaming, falling out for things. God said he a jealous God. And his praise he would give. He said, I, the Lord, am a jealous God. And my name will I not give to another, neither my praise to a graven image. What is this, this body? It's a graven image. It might not be graven in the system where we make it, but it's just an image. All you do is see so many people worshiping what they see. God is not with that. Um, many people, their families and their friends, all of the idol worshiping with sports. If they don't repent, they're going to burn them hell. It just is what it is. God is not. A, it's a it's a trap for a reason because they love what the creation over the creator. So that's what sports is. Sports is it's the world. It's, it's the world. Amen. Yes, my car is really what I'm working on. That's it. Hey, God, gonna definitely make sure you got all things you need. Keep believing. It says, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father might be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, that will I do. Deuteronomy speaks about the detestable thing like witchcraft, sorcery, mediums, spirits who console with the dead. Amen. Negro Masters. It's simply watching sports at home, idol worship. No, I wouldn't say simply watching it at home is idol worship, but I would definitely say you being a spiritual man, us being spiritual man, we refrain from doing things around other people who we know that really don't know God. Like, is it idol worship? Nah, not really. Uh, and it depends on how you looking at it. 
if you got to always be watching it at all, it depends on how y'all look at it. Like, but me, I, like, I, I already care about it. I don't idolize them. I don't care about them. If you see one of them, how you going to be looking? That's how you know if you idolize them or not. If one of them niggas walk past, are you going to be, hey, man, can I get your autograph? That's how you know if you idolize somebody. I don't care who nobody is. LeBron James, I that used to be I used to be a fan of him, but now this nigga can walk past. I'm a pre bro. You better repent. I know what you do. Niggas don't talk the gospel to him. But if so, it, it really, really many people idolize him anyway. They gonna say that they don't, but they do. Many people idolize sports. They gonna say that they don't, but they do. If you arguing for it, if you fighting for it, that's idolizing it. If you're taking up for these sports, if you arguing back and forth, man, my team better than your team. Do you know the word fan means that you are a fanatic? If you call yourself a fan of LeBron, that means you're a fanatic of LeBron. That means that you ain't a fanatic of Christ. It means you're a, a worshiper of man, and it's not good. Yeah, LeBron prayed pray to Bill. I seen LeBron dancing in the gold leotard, man. Mind you, I got a whole tattoo because of LeBron, chosen one. Not because of God, but because of that dude. But I didn't know about him. True, and people try to justify smoking. I don't know what you mean about smoking, um... Brothers, if you if you try to tell somebody that they going to hell for smoking weed, you're going to be going to hell. Sure. If you try to tell, that's just like telling somebody that they're going to be going to hell for eating a burger. How? How? Jesus said it ain't what going to a man that defileth a man, but what come out of a man that defileth a man. See, the many of the people, that's because y'all listen to the false prophets. Y'all listen to the people who don't have the spirit. So now you think that you can tell somebody, bro, they because they put something in the dead body that they going to. Now, God said if your right hand make it be to offend, cut it off. So if you having fellowship with some stuff that's drawing you away from God, you better cut it off. If we leading you into all these different places is a spiritual sin, cut it off. Bro, look, I'm not okay. And look, y'all need to work out y'all salvation because many of y'all idolize weed. If, if you got to smoke it every single day, it's an idol to you. If you need it every but. If you need it every day, but again, what go into you ain't making you unclean to God. What's coming out your mouth is putting you at odds against God. Jesus said that. So before y'all try to say, Jesus ain't smoke weed. Look, bro, the word of God says it ain't what go into a man that defileth a man, but what comes out of a man that defileth a man. He said, be sober minded and watch in prayer, brother. That means that your mind can be drunken off the things of the world. When you smoke weed, that's not... That's not doing nothing to my mind. That's my body. Now, it might can open me up to the spiritual things to think and have other things come and taint my mind, which it does. But when he said be sober minded, he's talking about think on the things above and not the things below. That is not the same. The things of the world put you in a drunken state where you cannot see Jesus. So he wants you to think on the things that are good, on the things that are true, on the things that are of good report. And it, it is spiritual, brother. God cannot be pleased in your flesh. You think that if you if you stop doing y'all need to get in the faith, because, again, if you tell certain people, Jesus said, let me just show you this. Jesus said, <clears throat> judge not lest ye be judged. And with the same measurement, ye judge, it will be met to unto you. So let's talk about the judgments. There's two, there's two judgments. One is of the works of the law, which is what I do in my flesh. The other is by righteousness, that God going to judge me better based off that I love him above all things. And that I have any gods over him and that I love my neighbor as I would love myself and do all the rest of the commandments and, uh, and, and look on God's statutes. Now, again, judge not. He's saying that if you judging me, you judging carnally by what I'm doing, not what I said, by what I did or by what I got on me. So if you judge me by that, you're judging me by the laws of Moses and you must think that you're a perfect man. So you're not giving me grace. So that means that God has to judge you by the laws of Moses. If you're going by grace, you're judging me for what comes out of my mouth. You're judging me for the communication that I'm putting on a, a, a display. You're not judging me for what I'm putting in my body because the body is dead. What is God benefiting or not benefiting off of that? I can see a video you said, he said, what I died. I smoke weed. I had a terrible spirit. He said, I can see a video. See your... You said you can send a video to my ground when I die. I don't know. I don't even know what you're saying, bro. He said, smoke weed. He had a terrible spiritual with him. We are not supposed to... Brother, let me tell you a, one thing. It says that Jesus Christ is before all things. And all things, all things... Consist of him strong drink if you keep drinking it you're gonna fall into sin 
But the, is the drink sin? No. Money, the love of money is the root of all evil. Is money evil? No. The love of it, it starts in your mind. Y'all need to slow down. Don't teach. Don't preach. Go get built up. Because if you go tell somebody, some, and, and repent, brother, just repent. I'm telling you, repent. Go ask God to give you truth because you don't know. you Just truth, you don't know what you're talking about, bro. I'm telling you, I'm not saying anyone should be smoking. I'm not saying anyone should be drinking. I'm telling you, get the mind right, and then God does the rest. Focus on the spirit. that when And, and, and if there be any strongholds through fasting and through uh, um, doing the will of God and through prayer, these strongholds will be broken and uplifted. The bands of wickedness will burst asunder. But you can't make nobody feel condemned when Jesus died so that they wouldn't. Jesus died so that you can clean the mind up. But those who don't want to clean their mind up, those are going to be the ones who still want to think that they can please God in their flesh. And they're going to go around telling people what they can't do. And you going to hell, brother. You're going to be like the Pharisees, brother. Jesus died and gave us grace because he know the war. Get your mind right. Love God. He said, watch ye and pray. He talking about your mind. For, for fear that you might fall into wickedness in the world. But he talking about your mind. He ain't talking about your body. It even talk about how I want. No, I ain't tripping. No, I'm just letting you know. I'm not judging. I ain't saying that you were judging. I, brother, you gave a judgment without knowing. See, when you don't really understand spiritual things, you say something. But if you don't perceive, if you don't have wisdom, you can't even perceive what you're saying. You literally just said you if you go up to what you said, you was basically telling people that they can't do something. That's a lie. I ain't saying that it's going to benefit nobody. But I'm telling you, we might want to refrain from what we think that we can tell people that they're going to be going to hell for. God judging us over the righteousness. He said, man, look on the outer. But God judges the inner. So you can see somebody outerly. Look at the tattoos. I'm going to hell because I got on tattoos. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. I ain't I ain't pray for no Mercedes. Nothing. What are you talking about? What? Would I, I'm going to get up out here, bro. I don't know. Uh, Glory to G. Let's get a prayer in. I don't know what some of y'all be on here talking about, but you ain't never hear me talking about praying to God about no Mercedes, bro. I don't pray to God about nothing but the spirit. I don't want nothing of this world at all. Something wrong with y'all, bro. Man, y'all dudes be really blowing. Like, y'all like, I can't wait till this world done, folk. I can't wait till this world over with, folk. He said, if you smoke it to get high, that's a sin. Is it a spiritual sin? You said, if you smoke it to get high, that's a sin. So what are you supposed to smoke to do? Oh, just for healing and stuff like that. That's what you're saying. Where in the Bible does it say that? Where in the Bible can you go to the Bible and say that? It sounds good. Brother, what I do in the body, you don't understand it, but uh, I get it. I get it. Everybody, you feel me? See, what you're doing is because you don't smoke. You think that you better than somebody because you don't smoke. But guess what? There's many other things that you do in the laws of Moses that God tell you not to do. I'm telling you, if you don't or uh, 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 repent, I'm telling you because you telling somebody right now when Jesus, Jesus is telling you, you telling somebody that they in sin. Do you know if you tell somebody that they sinning, what is the wages of sin? Let me just talk to you. The wages of sin is death. So if you telling me I'm sinning. By what I do in my body, you telling me that I'm going to hell, you're condemning me to hell or telling somebody else that they're condemning to hell. You're going to hell, brother. You are right now on your way to perdition and word. Repent. Stop talking because you don't know what you're talking about. He's about he's been in church. So let me just tell y'all why. This is how you know he don't, don't know nothing. The man just said he's been in church his whole life. The word of God says, how be it the Lord dwelleth not in places made by man's hands. Know ye not that your body is the temple of God and that the spirit of the Holy Ghost dwelleth in you? You talking about going to church, brother. I am the church. You talking about going to church, brother. I am the church. You need to repent because you don't know what you're talking about at all. And that church that you at ain't a church at all because you in a carnal. Don't be y'all. Don't get out here and try to make nobody feel condemned over what God is purging them clean from. You mean to tell me that? A, a, a man who loved God and he smoked weed. You think that a, Noah was a drunk. Noah was a drunk. Let's talk about it. Noah was a drunk. Noah was a drunk, bro. You don't know what sober mind, bro. 
my sober minded brother, is to have your mind thinking on the, Let me just get you out of here. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, this is what God, when, and then you got your name, God is your judge. So if God is your judge, judge in the Ten Commandments. What did Jesus say? If any of y'all break these least commandments and teach others to break the least of these commandments, you will be called least in the kingdom of God. He came to fulfill the law of the Moses because the body is evil. We can't please God in our body, brother. I can't please God. You ain't condemned if you smoke. I'm not condemned if I do. I'm condemned by what come out my heart. I'm condemned if I hate you. I'm condemned that if I'm covered in the things of the... Boy, y'all gonna have a heart. Y'all gonna see. <laughs> nah, nah. Some of these niggas don't need the word because they communication gonna stir up somebody else and cause confusion. They just not... They need to get on. So even Paul said in the word when they was committing certain fornications and doing certain things, what he said, they casted them out of the church. They kicked them out of the church. Evil communication corrupts good manners. We can't have nobody out here trying to tell somebody they going to hell because they do something in the body like you could please God in your body. It says that um, the, the, the carnal mind and the heart is enmity against God because it is not subject to the will of God. Neither indeed can be. So they who are in their flesh can never please God. How can I please God in a body that can't do the will of God? Because the will of God is spiritual. Love is in the mind. The body can't love God. What can I do in the body to say I love God? But except use the body to go and do the things that God would want us to do. Giving, casting out demons. I'm not punching, but I'm... Per People don't get it because they don't understand the spirit. They sensual. They think that they can please God by what they do outwardly. You can't. You can only please God in your mind. If smoking is putting you in transgression against God, your job ain't to be worried about stop smoking. Your job is to continue to worry about submitting to God and allowing for his power through fasting and prayer to clean and repair all breaches of things that will get you to transgress. Period. <clears throat> I will. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do a lot. I'm trying to do a lot. I want to, these videos is all right. I like them. You know, I know it's a quick word to get out there and everything like that. But God willing, right? Yah willing. In his name, I'll do way more, you know, just like more sound teaching or however I can. But uh, we just do what we can, man. I'm just having to do what I can. Look, I am just ready to send you to Jesus, brother. You feel me? I'm just to get out and use my testimony, use the wisdom that God gave me to compel people to go to seek their salvation. I ain't salvation. I just got it. And so that's what I'm doing. Trying to help everybody usher them back to the only one who can save because no man can save only Jesus, man. Sometimes I understand. Yeah, you're supposed to understand things later on because that's the revelation. That's just the you sitting up under the spirit of God and just seeing how he worked. That sometimes you sow a seed and then you don't get an increase to that seed until. But I, I sowed seeds years ago and I get an increase till now. So it's like it be in God's timing, man, because it's a fruit tree, you know, and it's in his timing, man. But anyway, I love y'all. Let's get a prayer in. Let's keep our hearts sanctified on the holiness, man. Dear Heavenly Father. <clears throat> We know the war right now, Father God, as you said, it is not a, a, a fleshly war, Lord. We don't wrestle against um, the, the flesh, Father God, but we wrestle against principality, against powers, Father God, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, Father God, against spiritual wickedness and high places. But you said, but the weapons of our warfare is mighty through God. Through the, but you said, but the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. Father, if any of us have strongholds right now, such as we, such as anything, Father God, that of, of, that is of this flesh that is drawing us at odds against you, Lord, we just ask in this, in this time, Lord, that you would have mercy and grace upon us, that we might be able to see these things and how it's pulling us away from you and give us the strength, Lord Jesus, that we might be able to fast and repair the breaches of old, Lord. But you said in your word, as it was written, be careful of nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Lord, you said that he who feareth just hasn't been made perfect in love yet. You said because fear hath torment, but perfect love casteth out all fear, Lord. So we don't want to move with fear. Because the Lord hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And what is that? That you are a loving God, a merciful God, and that you will not uh, uh, detour. You will not push away those who seek you. You said that when, uh, when we bear fruit, that you will continue to purge us clean. But every tree that don't bear fruit will be rooted up and, and cast it away. But Lord, we ask that you would allow for us to understand what it means to bear fruit. We ask that I ask in your name, Christ Jesus, that you just continue to build them up on this play. Uh, 
I built them up on this journey, Lord, because I understand how we don't learn the truth. We don't get the secrets until we continue to show you that we're walking with you even when we don't know. That we believe that you're going to give us the answers even though I don't got it. I believe that you love me even when I feel like I ain't being loved, but I know the love is hidden in your truth and I will make the sacrifice to be inconvenient, to be in a spiritual inconvenient place until you reveal yourself unto me, Lord. Give them the strength to do so because this is the walk through the wilderness, Father God, to see whether or not if we would go into the things, mess with the things of the enemy, Father God, or we would just allow for you to uh, to come into our hearts, Father God. You said patience possesses ye your souls, Father God. And again, you said the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but it's mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down of strongholds. Lord, whatever, let whatever stronghold we have over our life, Father God, that is bringing vexation into our spirits, Father God. That's bringing bitterness and strife, Father God, and spiritual transgression for us against you, Lord. Reveal them unto us that we might be able to go and use the power that you have given us to tread upon all serpents and all scorpions and all the powers of the devils. And you said nothing shall by no means hurt us. You also said that you have given us keys to bind you said, and whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. So fear what? When you've given us power over all the serpents and all the scorpions and all these evil frequencies, Lord, we just need to believe in you because we can't fight it. I can't fight it. Not by my power, not by my might, but by the spirit of the living Christ Jesus shall we be able to overcome the battles of the flesh, overcome the weapons and the, 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 uh, the, the vices of the enemy. You said, Lord, put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on a whole arm of the Lord, our God, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. First, having our feet shotted and led by the boots of your gospel, Lord. But we can't be led by what's not in us. Please have grace upon their souls that they might be able to spend time with you and sow seeds to the spirit, Lord Jesus. Many days we continue to sow seeds to the flesh. Many days our people are continuously blinded. Blinded, that's the drunken state. The things of the world is where we're not sober on. We don't think about you. We need to just be sober-minded. Jesus and you crucified and your things and nothing else. That's why you say, do not love the world, nor the things therein. If any man love the world or the things therein, the love of the Father is not in him. That's what sober minded is. That we love the Father. We love your things. We seek your things over the things of the world. Please. And I pray for the brother, Father God, that I had to block. Give him compassion and mercy, Lord. It's not that I cast anybody out there because I can't cast anybody into the fiery pits. But you said, if your brother draw with thee to offend, cut him off. I ain't going to be again. I don't want a fellowship. I don't want to come into contention, Lord Jesus. Only in truth. It's too much, it's too much uh, wickedness in the world right now, Father God, for the church to have contention. But Please, do your, do to your grace, do to your mean mercies, let your spirit of mercies and truth and grace fall upon us. You said to the merciful will be given mercy. To the merciful will be given mercy. We don't judge no man off of what they do in the flesh. We judge them by what fruit they bear. You said judge that tree by what fruit it bear. <laughs> Not what the tree look like. So Lord, please, 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 please give us the sword. Because your sword is the weapon of our warfare that casts down all imaginations. Like it is an imaginable thing to think that we can please you in our flesh and we cannot, Lord Jesus. But this is the weapon of our warfare. That we be able to bring low strongholds, cast down imaginations, and for every high thing that exalt itself above the knowledge of you, Jesus Christ, we go and to bring all thoughts captive and to the obedience of your spiritual law. That is what we desire to do with your word, Lord Jesus. But I pray that you have mercy on our souls, our hearts right now, Father God, for the weapons, for the war, for the war that is against your people right now, Father God, is might, it's a mighty war. I pray for more laborers that they might be able to truly go and labor in truth, Lord, and not just for the, uh, like you said in your word, as it was written, let nothing be done in strife or for vain glory. Let nothing be done out of bitterness or for money or for men to look at us and, 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 and for the hot seat and clapping us on, Lord. We only want to do the will that you want us to do, that we might be able to bring people from death to life, Lord. This is the duty of, 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 of what you are calling us to do, and we want to do it. Many people don't want to do it because they don't see the riches in you. But we pray that they be able to see the riches in your name and see the riches in your word and see the love and compassion and see what you have given that we might be able to just desire to give all here because we gain all after. In your name, Christ Jesus, do I pray. In your name, do I hope in. In your name, Father God, do I ask for, uh, for forgiveness over the things that I've said and the things that I've thought against my brother and Father God. And I pray that you will continue to keep in me righteousness and continue to, through your spirit, Father God, keep me upright and keep the brethren upright, Father God, as it was written in the word. Keep thy heart with all diligence. 
for out of it flows the issues of life, Lord. And it is if we don't if you don't keep the city. If we don't engage into your word and allow for your word to stay seared on our consciousness, Father God, throughout the day, then you won't keep the city, Father God. It's up to us, Father God, to say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and unto, wit, and unto understanding, thou art my kinswoman, that they may keep us from a strange woman. Lord, I love you, Lord. We glory and praise you in your mighty name. We pray. Amen. I don't even want to look up right now. How does it on here? Anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully the brother who was on here talking that man, he understand that, you know, you might not smoke weed, you know, but uh, it's many other things that we do in our body that Jesus got. Like they might not know the laws. Technically, if you was born out of wedlock, you can't even be saved. So, but a lot of people they hang around. Many people that preach a, uh, they just preach half of the gospel, right? But when you preach the Fullness in the fullness. Look, I'm not and I'm not encouraging none of y'all to be out here getting high. Please do not think that that's what I'm encouraging. I'm actually encouraging you not to be honest. I'm just don't. I don't want you to think that you condemned. Right. I don't want you to think that you condemned. No, I'm not going on YouTube later, bro. I just don't want nobody to feel like they condemned for uh, uh, for what God is wanting to help you with. You only condemned if you don't believe in Jesus, bro. It says for everyone that believeth on him. Is not condemned, but that everybody that don't believe on him is condemned already while they live it. So <laughs> believing in Jesus is what? Jesus is what? He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. What's the truth? What is the truth? The truth is that all men have sinned. And because all men have sinned, that's why Jesus was the sacrifice. That righteousness wouldn't come by what men can do in their flesh. But come by believing in he who laid down a life and then following the path that he did and doing everything in your willpower to walk how Jesus did. That's what he died for. Not so that I could do something and be like, God, I did. He said, if salvation is of works, then it is no more of grace. Y'all know that if your salvation come by what you do, it ain't no more freely given to you from Jesus. And so when it's freely given, I don't do nothing for it. I just do my duty. And my duty ain't in the flesh. It's in the spirit. Loving. Giving. Treating people how I want to be treated. So don't think that you better than nobody. Because you drink. But you don't smoke. Or you smoke. But you don't drink. Or you masturbate. But you ain't a homosexual. You don't want to play that. You don't want to play that fleshly game. You want to be in the spirit where there's grace. If you are in the laws, there is no grace. If you want to be in the, the spirit, there's grace for you. Means this, what a righteous man may fall. Seven times. But he gets back up, right? But the people that's in the laws, they not going to fall. They're going to fall into mischief, condemning you, telling you, well, you going to hell by what you're doing. I don't speak that people going to hell by when you mess up in your flesh. I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you, if you don't seek the Lord, if you don't seek to seek him with your whole heart and get out your flesh. That's what I say. I repeat what the Lord said. I'm not condemning nobody because I can't condemn nobody. I just repeat what he said. That's all I try to do. You feel me? But don't let not a man do bro. When you fall short, guess what? He died. So when you fall short, you could do what? Go call on him. Now, if you just saying he died so that I could willfully fall short, you send it willfully. But when you going through this journey, when you getting purged clean, when you going through the fire, the fire don't feel good. He burning off everything that you. Let's talk about it. I'm fat, right? The way that the, the uh, 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 um. The way, that, the, the way that you burn off calories is by hard work, right? But it don't feel good. It's called going through the fire. I had to eat all this stuff, so it's like sin. I ate all this stuff, now it's on me, but now I got to work it all off. And guess what? It don't feel good. It's spiritual, and that's what God is doing. He love y'all enough. He allow it because now when you in God, sin makes you feel terrible. So what? So sin takes you a place because... It, where are we now? I, I hated sin. I hated things in the world. And now I'm chasing higher only because of sin that I find Jesus. So only because of sin <laughs> will I break sin. <laughs> you gotta, what did Jesus do for sin? Because of sin's sake, he came into the world and condemned sin. And that's what the power that we get through him. And the sin, he talking about, bro, love your people. Love them. The body is dead already while living. Love on them. 
Because if I got the mind right, if I love God, I won't steal. I won't curse. If I love my neighbors, I won't have sex with his wife. I won't plot against him. I won't do these things. I won't speak evil of his life. That's why God said, be married to me in, my, in your mind. People need to put down the laws of Moses because the laws of Moses and Jesus are contrary one to the other. You're going to think you're giving mercy and grace or not. you condemning somebody. Mercy and grace is in the commandments of God. Condemption to hell is in sin. That's in the laws of Moses. If you told me, I'm, if you're calling me a sinner, you're telling me that I'm going to hell. Now, if I'm actually um, in the spirit and I'm, and I'm wrong, tell me because I love it. <clears throat> Hey, don't, uh, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to, um, your words, my boy. And I uh, ain't nothing good. Like he said, I don't know what you mean by that, uh, but you good. Like, yeah, you can, we supposed to get honor. You just respect your brother. Like God used me to bring salvation to you, but it was God that gave you increases and he used the man to get to me. And so what do we do? We love our brothers and we can command our brothers. We don't glory in no man. We glory in the spirit that's at work in the man. Amen. Amen. Like, like bro just said, that is the spirit that draws you to repentance for real. It's if, 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 cause we're nothing but vessels, but you know, we still what God says we bestow greater honor on our brothers that do what they labor. And so honor is just, bro, I, I respect you. I appreciate you just as a man would do. That's all. It ain't that he put me on no pedestal. But it's like, I love y'all. We respect each other. It says let each of us, we esteem each other higher than the next. Not esteem, but you know, we look on each other. Like, I, I'll, I'll, I'll put you higher on a pedestal than I put myself. Right? But yeah, anyway, man, I love y'all, man. Um, let not, let, let's not be dismayed at what's going on in the time that we in right now. And let's really seek the Lord our God. Um, the pride is the beginning to the fall. Women, y'all suffer from that badly. Men, we suffer from that badly. We need to drop pride. We need to drop all, like, you're nobody. And if I call you nobody and that make you feel away, then that means you got pride in you because I'm nobody. You can call me nobody all day. And I'm going to tell you, amen, Jesus is the only one that's somebody, period. Yeah, I'm going to drop this on uh, YouTube, bro. But yeah, um, I don't know. I feel like I said all I got to say. We pray. Um, I'm praying for y'all always, bro. Thankful for real. Okay. Yeah, we working, man. We working. Let's just keep the love. Keep it pure. We all working, man. We all going through the fire together. We all one and the same, man. But anyways, man, I love y'all, bro. Let's uh, let's keep purging. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving in the face, man. Word of Christ. Value Christ over your life.